Hello Desert Bearhawk fans. Uh, we're in the shop and uh, doing a little work on the right wing. I know I said it was done and it is, but uh, I'm waiting for the hardware to come to rivet on this trailing edge. And um, spruce has kind of got me over a barrel. It's not going to be in until the 27th and then a day to get here. And that's when they say it's going to be in. It might, you know, that might just be pie in the sky. I don't know. But uh, while I was out here, I finally decided I'd drill in the holes. Just made the executive decision to go ahead and plot the holes and put them in. And you can see that uh, all my little cute Calico's in a row there, along with Orson the shop dog. Here's Orson. And uh, yeah, so they're all drilled in. And it's all good. So as I'm sitting here looking at my trailing edge, I began to get, I don't know, a little concerned. And I'm sure my concern is born more out of my, the thought in my head that I'm actually going to strap this thing to my rear end and fly it one day than any real legitimate concern. But let me tell you what my concern is and then um, my solution for fixing it. Now, I'm going to reach under here so the camera might get goofy. Let me just do that. All right. So what I have here is the original flap trailing edge that I made. And I decided not to use it. And the reason I decided not to use it is because in the plans, they tell you to bend these ends down right here at a 45. and you can Well, not a 45, but at a pretty good angle. And you can see it right there a little bit where they're bent down. The problem is, is that when they go to sit on the on the ribs, you know, the ribs are flat. So when this part goes to sit on here, you're sitting on this hump, you know, and you can see it really pronounced here on the on the leading edge of the flap. You could see that how that that would be a hump there. And then when I riveted down the material, it pulled it flat right where the rib is, and then it, and it slopes back down in between. And basically, what that's doing is it's giving this structure or this this metal some structure because of this mechanical bend here it, it stiffens the part there and then when the parts stiffer it's you know it's got more structure more strength it's the same principle for the trailing edge of the aileron and the flap the problem or the difference is is a that skin right there is 20 thousandths and this skin's 25 thousandths i know five thousandths but it does make a difference, believe me. And B, you've got some pretty good access along the side there to get in there and get your squeezer in there and smash them rivets down. Where these rivets, you don't have any access. As a matter of fact, you have such limited access that we have to put blind rivets here. I could probably squeeze this one, but I'm no way I'm in, am I getting that one. It ain't happening, so blind rivets. And uh, as a side note, I took a little impromptu uh, flight line survey, some GA stuff on the line, and all the pipers I saw, their, their trailing edges are riveted together with line rivets as well. And they actually use, uh, you know, like uh, 470, the dome head rivets, where we're gonna use 426 counter sun. But anyways, I digress. So, because I didn't like the way this was starting to, to work out, and what I did is I took my squeezer and I actually mashed the areas where it's going to meet the ribs. I mashed those flat. You can see it did it there and down there and so on and so forth. And I did it with my with my pneumatic squeezer and you could see it put some dents in it and it just wasn't an elegant solution. I wasn't liking it. I felt like I was getting to the 50 yard or the 100, you know, excuse me, the 99 yard line on this wing and then I'm going to drop the ball before scoring. So what I elected to do was, and I talked about this earlier, was bend the trailing edge with no bend here. Just a simple V-shape trailing edge, just like so. And that came out nice and straight and smooth. It lays down on the, on the uh, ribs really perfect. Everything's really good. However, as I'm sitting here with my idle mind, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if the structure that's in, introduced, the strength that's introduced by that bend is engineered and i don't know if it is or it isn't and without it this surface this assembly is weak 
And of course, now I start thinking, well, I don't want this to fold. I don't want this to be weak. And I don't think it will anyway, but you know how it is. The over-engineerer that I am, I got to thinking about how, what solution could I use to put the bend in there. And I said, well, maybe I can create a special tool, you know, a big press deal, and weld something up and machinery and hydraulics and, you know, something super complicated for something super easy. And, and I didn't like that idea. And then I got to thinking, wait a minute. We put flanges on our lightning holes, just like that lightning hole right there. You can see that there are flanges on these light and on the ribs too. See the flanges? And those flanges were done with a combination of dies, the round ones. Uh, these these holes, the rib ones, and then these these here were these were done with what they call a bob stick. And I thought, well, hell, if I can bob stick a flange into this. Why can't I bob stick a flange into this? And I did. So, what I did is I took my bob stick, or my version of the bob stick, and you could see that there's a slot cut in it. And I just stuck it on here, bent it down, and pulled it along. And I just kept working it back and forth. As a matter of fact, getting a hold of it right up when the, I'm, forgive the camera work here, I'm holding the camera with one hand. Well, it was right up against there trying to get it get in here and pull it I couldn't couldn't get in there very well so what I did is I took a piece of rope here Let's see if I can get to the end of it the piece a piece of rope here like this it tied a couple of loops in it and I slipped one loop around the tool and the other loop for my fingers to pull held it down with one hand and pulled on the rope with the other and I was able to pull it away from the edge and get it going and it is working out much better than even I thought it would work. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the little shadow line right there where the bend is. You can almost see it. And I got my flashlight here. I'm gonna to try to illuminate it even more so you can see it. I don't know if you can. Flashlight's awful bright. It almost washes out the video. I'm gonna to tone it down here a little bit. But you can see, see the little shadow line right now? You can see that line right there. And then it slopes right up to the, right up to the uh, rib, comes down slopes right up to the rib again and I I've only been working this a few minutes and I've done this section here this section here this section here and a little bit in between right here and only just just for 10 minutes while I'm sitting here listening to the radio I was working it and I was able to put in a structural bend that I can actually see with my eyes I mean I can see it I'm not just imagining it's there and I think that if I work the trailing edge like this all the way down, both sides, it'll do two things. It's going to stiffen this up. And as a matter of fact, just pushing on this, I can feel that this is stiffer than this over here that I didn't do. You can see. See the flex in that? Well, maybe you can. I don't know. Pretty good flex. And then over here, not so much. It doesn't flex as much. So it's actually, act it's actually stiffening up the part. I think that's going to work. I think it's an elegant solution. I think trying to bend in the uh, the bends on your trailing edge and then mash them out when you put your rivets in, I think that's a lot of work and effort that I don't know that I would recommend you do. So if you're building this wing, I mean, uh, if, you, if you're, you know, don't take my word for it. Certainly talk to Mr. Barrows. Uh, make, you, make your own decision. Don't let me talk you into a wing failure, but I'm very confident that once this is uh, completed and I've you know, bob stick this flange in here. It will be exactly what the designer intended it to be. And um, yeah, I think it'll work out good. And this is another good thing for people who don't have, don't have an eight foot break in their shop. You know, you can build a, uh, you know, you can build a bench break with some hardwood and some hinges and maybe get this trailing edge bent in a V and work it with some seaming pliers like those right there and get it down where you want it. But good luck bending this in a homemade brake. You're not going to get it. There's nothing to clamp onto here. So if you don't have a homemade brake, or excuse me, if you do have a homemade brake and you don't have access to an 8-foot one, this is also an excellent solution to getting that flange in there and getting that, that structure, that, uh, the structure that that bend gives you back into the piece. So that's my little tip for the night. Um, you can make a bob stick. This is a piece of Durlin I picked up at the local uh, hardware supply store. I just took my bandsaw, 
milled in a slot, took my belt sander and sanded off some relief so I can get up in there. And uh, bing, bang, boom, you can, you can make this easy. Uh, nice thing about this Durlin block is it will slide it pretty nicely on the, uh, on the aluminum. You could make the same tool out of a piece of hardwood just like we make the bob sticks for the holes, for the uh, flange holes. So um, there you have it. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're working on while we're waiting for rivets to show up from aircraft spruce. I hope you find this little tip helpful. Um, if you've got any thoughts about it, like I'm going to kill myself, don't do it, Dave, please, by all means, make a comment because uh, better to say something now than later when I'm a smoking hole in the ground. But I honestly don't think that this is going to matter one way or another, but from, in my mind, um, I like it. Another side benefit is, is that when the covering, when the fabric covering goes over it, it's going to have a nice smooth edge. It won't have any sharp edges right here for the covering to ride on. It will be riding on this little hump and uh, everything should be good. All right. So, uh, for, uh, Dave and Orson in the shop at 11, 15 at night, 11, 10 at night. That's our update. And we'll talk to you next time.